Hey, this is John. Welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at Spread. This is by Image Comics. This is issue one. This was 350. And I honestly don't remember what year it was. I'm going to say 2013. And I'm probably wrong. But this is by Justin Jordan, who I know nothing about other than this. Drawn by Kyle Strom, who I know nothing about other than this. And Felipe Sobrero. I know nothing about this creative team. To be honest, I don't remember why I picked it up. I think I was at like my most manic, insane comic book period, and I was just buying like everything. And I picked this up, and I, I obviously I liked it. But look at that cover; it's kind of interesting cover, right? Okay, so let's open it up and let's. Okay, Justin Jordan and Kyle. Stone. This is Image Comics. I said that already. But what year was this? 2014. Okay, all right. Good guess. Good guess. It wasn't wasn't a bad guess. But uh, look at that interesting. Look at that. Panel. I, I I found this artwork to be like hideous, disgusting, and perfect for this series. Just look at all that red. Don't don't these things just look they feel like if you were to touch them they would be like sticky with, with like drying blood and ugh, just attack just just perfect. Just just gross. And that you know, and that's that's a good way to describe the series. It's just gross. So what's going on? Um I forget what caused it, but this spread is the only way to describe it which is why it's a perfectly good title it, it just started growing it's like a it's like a disease it's like a, a, a hive or a colony or a, 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 of organisms it's like one massive carpet of, of tissue and flesh-like substance is just growing all over the united states and i honestly I, for the life of me i don't i don't remember how it started but it's just it's just growing and what does it do it devours all organic matter all like animal matter because you can see it, it leaves the trees and stuff like that so moose mice humans whatever they get devoured and re and then this thing just grows and it's just this like hideous disgusting mess you know and what's going on well i think uh if, I, if memory serves me right Everybody from like the color, uh, the the Rocky Mountains to the west is just abandoned because this that's where the spread is, and the Rocky Mountains are forming like a, a natural barrier to uh, to uh, contain this thing. Although it is making progress over that, so you know the the eastern side of the United States, it's like martial law, you know. And and if they find that you have any trace of the spread on you, because it is like a disease, it could just devour you whole, or you could like just grow it on you like like a zombie opera that, that's it you, they, they just kill you and burn you or whatever so of course inside the spread inside the area that's that's a that's afflicted it's no man's land so here's people just like shooting other people for foods for supplies and uh this is no he didn't shoot this person he he just stumbled upon him and he's the hero of the story so you see he's pulled the arrow out of course and there's the spread behind him, and he is just like, he's like John Wick. He has this axe, and that's all he says is, no, that's, no. And this guy's like, huh? Stop. Well, he says stop. But look, you can see this guy's afflicted, and his eyes are just, just gross. Oh, that's, it's just, just David Cronenberg, you know, just, just body horror. And this, this guy just attacks him, and he's just... You know, he's just making sure that these these things don't bite him or whatever. And just look at this thing. And he's just fighting and fighting, and as he slices it, it's 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 like the thing. It, you know, it's so much like a, a John Carpenter's the thing. You know, so it's Cronenberg, Cop, uh, Carpenter, Lovecraft, it's all that stuff. And is this woman with an arrow in her, and somebody's shooting at her, and these guys? There's always like bad guy, punk guy, look looking guys, and they just. They scavenge you, you know, and they find a baby, a little baby. I guess this could, no, please, she's important. Don't touch me, you know. What are we going to do with the baby? Jesus, Fat Jack will pay for a meal because you want to bring him to him? Leave her for the spread. So they decided what to do with the baby. They're going to eat the baby. It's that kind of conduct. So this poor woman is crawling through the snow and she finds no. The pe who people, how many, how many were there? I don't know, please, I can't help you. I'm sorry, it's not me. She needs to get hit. Hope, that's the baby's name. Hope, you gotta save the baby, you gotta save the baby. And then she dies. 
So he's just like, oh God, you know, the reluctant, the reluctant tough guy with the heart of gold. You know what I mean? It's, it's a trope and it works. It always gets me. You know, there's a reason why they do it because it works. Han Solo, the scoundrel with the heart of gold, you know, the reluctant hero, you know, even Jack Sparrow was that bad guy with the heart of gold. So here he comes. He's just walking out. He's like, I want the baby. <laughs> Look at the machine gun. Look at, and he's firing wrong, if you ask me. And what does he do? He swats the arrow out because, you know, he's the hero of the story. They fire machine guns at him. He's moving out of the way. The horse flips out and he runs up with tomahawks against guys with, with machine guns and just, just starts murdering. Murder Rooney, murder Rooney. Look at that. Murder Rooney. Murder Rooney. And it's just disgusting. You know, if comments are not from the screen. And then he finds the baby. And he's like, you know, what does he do? What does he do? The baby's there. Of course. And here comes the spread. And this, you know, the spread sends out like little masses, just like living bloody tumors that just come out yeah, searching for, for more organic flesh to, to consume, you know, and he grabs the baby and he starts running and he starts running, you know, so why not, you know, the baby and what's the spread waiting for? So it just comes from under the snow and it's going to kill him. It's going to kill him. And he's resigning himself to this horrible fate. I'm sorry. I failed you. I failed the baby. The baby's crying and the little tear hits this and dissolves it. And this is why one tear just kills this whole horrible mess. No, no was wrong. He didn't understand what she was telling him. Not when he first understood. He wasn't telling him that was what she called. He was telling me what I was. I was hope. And there's the baby. And he's like, you should have heard. Uh, so this guy, I forget his name, but he's like, for whatever reason, the, the spread didn't totally consume him. It, it, it like corrupted his mind. So he's like afflicted, but not falling apart and he's like a UNA so it's kind of like the the Borg Queen remember it's, yeah though to me the Borg Queen in, in Star Trek was the worst thing because the Borg was supposed to be this mindless collective being with no personality and no distinction and then they had the Hive Queen and they had Locutus I, I don't know I, I thought once they gave like a voice and a characteristics to the Borg they kind of ruined it but that's what this guy is but it works because well, I don't know he's creepy so it was a finite series. It ended. And I, I I forget exactly how many issues. But unfortunately, it didn't go as long as he wanted. The, the sales started to, to, to get worse and worse and worse. So he, he, he tied all the loose ends together and ended the series the way he wanted. But I think he had more to tell. But unfortunately, he couldn't tell. That's just the way it is of, of serialized storytelling like comic books or TV shows and stuff like that. You take it a risk. But it's mature. There's a couple of issues that... Uh, like had like warnings on it like don't read like i i i don't know this is gonna tick off a few people and i apologize in advance but like you saw the society this they were gonna bring this baby to a guy fat jack to eat the baby you know what i mean and the author just threw that in this comic without apologizing for it but they find a woman no saves a woman and the woman becomes like a surrogate mother for, for hope and that woman's story was horrible. She she was captured by these people and like sexually abused and you know and and no saved her from this horrible like of, of like just society falling apart. And there was like a big write up how he was apologized. It was the hardest thing he ever wrote. But he could write about a baby about to be cannibalized and he could write about no murdering people, smashing people in the face and other people. But I, I don't know. I just find it to be like false. Like you know. It, it's it's a horrible world. Everything's horrible. Like it's, you know, if you're gonna write a horrible premise, you got you got you got to just deal with the fact that it's a horrible premise. Not horrible in its bed. I think it's an excellent premise. Um, when I was talking about this comic, I, I don't play video games. The only video game I play is is Civilization, and uh, I so apparently the 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 Last of Us. Is, is that the name of the video game where the girl was immune to the, the, the flower zombies and uh, it was a choice? That's like this. Does, does no one, do they want to sacrifice this baby, you know, to, to find out, to, to synthesize its blood to uh, so they could kill the spread? Because the spread is slowly growing. It's not only going to take out America, it's going to go to Canada, it's going to go to Mexico, you know. 
it'll probably go across the Bering Strait and end up taking out the whole world kind of thing, you know? So that's what's one life against the whole world. That's that's like what the story's about. And uh, I, I'm not going to spoil it, obviously. But I thought it was a great story. I, I really, it was a gory story, you know, if, if you know, if you can't handle that, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, but I, it, it was good. It was brutal. And, and, uh, I think it would make an excellent, terrifying, horrible movie, you know, like definitely like David Cronenberg. <laughs> I could see him doing this. Like John Carpenter just making the spread. What a, what a, what a premise. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. All right. Bye-bye everybody.